Okay, so we're going to go over a couple of examples that we did not talk about last time. So, first one. Sorry for the pause. Okay, so the first one. We talked about this yesterday. Let's just do a real quick refresher. This is our basic parent function of exponential functions. Um, let's see, so Jack, what does this K represent? Initial amount. Initial amount? Good. Okay. Mia, what's the A represent? Uh, the rate. Good, great. Now, if the rate is at 0.95, Chris, is that a growth or a decay problem? Decay. Decay, and how do you know that? To the decimal, okay. Now, another way, and we sort of talked about this, another way of representing this function is where A, your rate of growth, is one plus r. Okay. So like if you're increasing by 5%, the rate is 1.05, right? You add the rate. But if it's a negative 5%, like a 95% growth rate, then it would be 1 minus 0.5. Okay? This just sometimes makes more sense when I'm looking at applications. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem. Um, what is the initial amount of this problem, Nicolette? Why don't you read the problem first? Okay. Suppose you invest $12,000 in an account that earns you 5% interest. Compounded monthly interest. And then, uh, this amount is $12,000. Good. Cody, you have a question, Cody? Um, no, not Okay. Now the rate. <coughs> this sounds a little more complex than the ones we've looked at. What makes this more complex, John? Uh, well, it's compounded monthly, yeah. and then it says for 10 years. Right. Okay. Now, when you read this problem, 5% interest, and you guys just have to think real life. It's not really clear here. When you have money in account and they say it's 5% interest, is that a monthly interest or is that generally annual interest? Okay. More annual. Yeah. annual. Guessing. That's okay. And it's okay to guess wrong. I guess wrong all the time. In fact, when I did this problem, I initially did it wrong because I read the problem. And I thought, oh, that's my monthly interest. No. Generally in a bank investing, it's an annual interest. Okay. So when I look at this growth rate here, it's going to be, it's growing, but it's a 5% annual interest. But I'm compounding it each month. So what's going to be my monthly interest? I have to divide it by 12. Right. I have to take that 5% and I have to divide it by 12. That's the interest that my account will earn every month. Okay? So I'm not going to get 5% every month. The bank isn't promising that. They're promising an annual rate. That's a little bit marketing. You've got to understand that, too. Like on your credit card, you know, it might be a 3% annual interest, but how often are they compounding their interest? Monthly, some of them daily. Is it daily? Yeah. Now, now this part here. So it is being compounded every month. So how do I represent that? Is it 10 times being compounded? Uh, right, it's 120 because it's 12 times 10. So 120 times they're going to look at the value of my account and they're going to give me some interest. Now it's not going to be 5%, it's going to be 5% five percent five times 12. And the next month they'll give me some interest of what the balance is. And the next month, and we'll do that 120 times over a period of time. Okay? So now we've got the initial amount, we've got the rate, and now we just have to figure out how much money we have. So would you do this in your calculator? And find out. Find out how much money is in my account for 10 years. Because that would be if it was compounded annually. Oh, is it called compounded? Monthly, right. So every month they go in and they give you more interest. Okay. So what did we, what did what did you what did you get, Alex? Twelve thousand one point six four or six five, I guess. Do you am I you guys concurring with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so those are that gain 12,000 something. You're making nothing on that account over 10 years. What is going on? I got 12,000. Yeah, see, that's, that's not a good, good success right there. Over 10 years? Okay, so turn around Chris. I'll show what you put into Chris. He'll help you figure it out. Okay. Uh, start again with Toby on that one, of course, see if you have it. Did most of you, though, get 19,000? Now, this formula. Oh, it's time. Oh, I don't know. Oh, you figured it out? You forgot the print. Yeah. Now, this should look familiar to you. Now, notice we figured this out without memorizing the formula. But, oh, oh, wait, where's my camera? Oh. I'm dropping the ball like Francis does. No. Whoa. <laughs> Heard that now. Just kidding. Well, Francis is all American. So good to get up for his game. It's okay, Francis. I love you. I love you. Go, Francis. Okay, do you guys remember this formula here? Yes. <laughs> Look, do you see any similarity going on? Yeah. Okay. Now, so notice then what we just derived and talked through is our principal interest of compound interest. Okay, so if you forget this formula, I'm not really that good at remembering formulas. I, I don't just don't remember short term stuff like that. But I could re refigure it out. So notice what does R stand for? Rate. 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 So this is like your annual rate. And what does the N represent then? Like how many compounds? How many times it's compounded? The number of times it's compounded. And then we multiply the number of times it's compounded by the yield. And that would be the exponent. Okay? Do you use all the Um, Generally for interest, yes. But depending on the scenario, it could switch. Now, I think there was one more example. Did we talk about half life? Last time? Yes. Oh, okay. I'll do one half life. Yes, sir. Uh, are you going to do eight thirty? We will. Do you remember that? Yes, that's going to come up today. Okay, let's do this, and then I'll have you guys work. Yes, sir. Did you just lose money on that? No. No, my final outcome was nineteen thousand. <laughs> so I started with twelve thousand. <laughs> you okay with that, John? You're looking at me so perfectly. What's the capital A? That is the amount of money. So, like, this is the amount of money in my account, okay. and this is the principal. So, in this, in this equation here. I got it. I, you good? Yeah. <laughs> I just that's all question. Maybe, maybe they took you into losing money. <laughs> no, we didn't lose any money. Okay, now let's talk about half-life. Um, half-life is special. Um, half-life, if you remember, is you're given, okay, so if I have five grams of bacteria or radioactive substance, in 20 days is my half-life, so in 20 days I'll have half the amount. 20 days I'll have half the amount. So, now, half-life operates under just an exponential function, but instead of growth, it's decaying. So, look at my rate. One half. One half. Right? So that makes sense. Now, t, now notice K will be the initial amount. T over N. Why is it T over N? The time. The time. Divided by how many times it was given. Good. How many days? Out of 20 days, like if this is 20 day half life, out of 20 days then, that is the time period, because 20 is the base in this time. So let's see if we can just use this, uh, these facts to find the answer here. So, um, Mike, right? So, Mike, what's the, um, let's fill in the facts. Tell me what you can fill in. This is the, what facts can you fill in from this word problem? Okay. is fine. Okay. I'm not sure what 
Good, that's what I don't know. So that's the T. And what is the half life? So it's certain days the out of because it's out of twenty. We're looking at it in regards to twenty. It's half life. We want to know how long then if a half life is twenty days, how long will it take me to get to one again? Right, Charles? So, so this Right, because half life is always in terms of plural. Yeah. So for half life, it's always going to be in respect to whatever they give us as the rate for half life. Okay. Now, would you please solve this? I use some logarithms again, folks. Four. I'm just going to write point two. That'll be easier to see in my calculator. Okay. okay. Calculator and tell me what you get. Let's see if it's reasonable. What'd you get? Yeah, let's have you guys all agree? Almost. We're almost agreeing. Yeah. <laughs> now, is that reasonable? If it takes 20 days to get down to two and a half grams, so then it might take 46 days to get down to two and a half grams. In general, and then if I specified otherwise, uh, we were allowed to be less than no, in general, we're allowed to three decimal places. Three decimal places. The AP exam asks for three decimal places. Okay, so the real answer is going to be four to three. Yeah, and we might say how many days? I would say 47 days. Oh, okay. Because it's 46 and then a little bit of the next day. So the 47th day will be 47. Okay? Okay, great. Now, let me turn off the recorder. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.